Hi friends, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. <sighs> Whew. It's been a little while, I apologize. Um, the short version is my mom had some health problems. She's fine now, um, but that was a whole day of doctor appointment and lab and blah, blah. And then she stayed with me for four days and that totally threw me off. I don't know if it's because I was just worried about her or um, if it was because I'm not used to living with people <laughs> and that threw me off, I don't know. But she was here for four days and then um, I took her home and I had a whole bunch of work to do. I had clients last week at the end of the week and I just couldn't make myself calm down and focus enough to film anything. I wasn't reading much, you know, just trying to get my head on straight again. So I'm back. I'm here um, with what may be a bit of a longer video. I apologize. I'm going to do a January wrap up and a February TBR. There are two um, <laughs> readathons, that's the word, that are both this weekend, Friday through Monday at the same time. So <clears throat> I'm very excited about that. Okay, so getting straight into it to finish up my January wrap up. Um, what I read, the last three books I read in January were The Secret History of the Pink Carnation by Lauren Willig. This was my second time reading it, and this was the first month of doing our year long group read with uh, my friend Danny, of course, at Spinelli Speaks. Hey, girl. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one, and I'm. I, I'm going to give it three and a half stars this time. I think the first time I read it, I gave it four. There were some things I found a little annoying that I didn't notice the first time so much. Uh, mostly just that Amy, who is the main girl, the main character from the past, um, that she was really immature and really annoying. I didn't find her that way the first time I read the book, but I really enjoyed this book and the start to the series. So excuse me, basically the premise is um, there is the modern day timeline. We're following a young lady named Eloise working on her PhD dissertation and she wants to unmask who the pink carnation is. The pink carnation is a spy that was active in Napoleonic France and was working alongside the Scarlet Pimpernel and the Purple Gentian. So she was trying to figure out how to unmask who the pink carnation was because that's never been publicly revealed. And she's been writing to who she thinks are the descendants of the pink carnation. And um, she's getting rejected everywhere except she gets one acceptance and says, please come to London and you'll have access to our family papers. It's no problem. So she goes and um, she meets Colin, who is someone she thought was much older, and she had uh, written to asking for permission to access his family archives, and he was very rude and said no. Very rudely said no, I should say. And then the woman who said yes is his um, older aunt. So Colin eventually finds out that she is there, and she's going to unmask the pink carnation, and he's not happy about it. Um, so we get to know Eloise and Colin and the aunt a little bit in modern day, but we spend most of the story back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And we're with the group of people around the Purple Gentian and the Pink Carnation. So you're, you know, plotting and getting spying and um, talking about all these really fantastic, really fun things, reading the letters and everything. And then you jump back to the present day every few chapters. So it was really enjoyable, really a lot of fun. And um, we're already working on the second book in the series, which is great. So that was a lot of fun. I'm very glad that I reread that and that we're reading the series together too. Okay, next up, uh, Men to Avoid in Art and Life by Nicole. I think it's Tresini. Tresini. I'm not sure which. I'm giving this one three stars. It's less than 100 pages. If you are on Twitter and you have followed her account, you've probably seen a lot of this before. It's just clever little jokes about how men can be really terrible, accompanied with classical pieces of art. So some things made me chuckle, but mostly I just thought it was fine. You know, two and a half stars. I wouldn't buy it, but if you see it at the library and you want to check it out, please go ahead. I think it's much better suited for Twitter or Instagram or something than a book form, but I understand, you know. 
And the last book I read that in January was called Rain Before Rainbows. This is a children's illustrated picture book. Um, I can't read my handwriting on here, so <laughs> this will be fun. It's by Smriti Prasadana Halls, and it's illustrated by David, I think it's Litchfield or Litchfeld. I can't read my writing. I'm sure you're looking at a picture right now of it too. This was really sweet and lovely. I gave it four stars. The illustrations are so beautiful and they elevate what is really comforting text. I don't know if this is a poem or something that's been around for a while or if it just has that feel of being sort of timeless, but it's about, you know, working hard and um, doing things and things won't always be great, but eventually you'll get, you know, sort of a reward for hard work roughly. So I did enjoy that. It was really good. So I read 18 total books in January, but probably eight of those were picture books. I'm not complaining by any means. I love picture books, but it sounds a little better than maybe it actually was. Okay, so that's that. Then on to February TBR for me. Okay, not, not too many books. I've got four here. First up, is the second in the read-along I'm doing with Danny. So this is The Mask of the Black Tulip by Lauren Willig. Um, this follows the adventures of... Oh my gosh, what is her name? This terrible in the past. Something with an H. Henrietta? Anyways, we follow Hen and Miles. Both of them were side characters in the first book. So we're following their story now, which is set several years, maybe six years in the future from the events in the past <laughs> of the Pink Carnation. Or it's the same, it's the next day, the same weekend, next day, um, in the modern timeline with Eloise and Colin. Um, Eloise is at, going with Colin to his country house, which is where the big library was that he really rejected her from before. So they're there now. <laughs> um, we got our first reading in yesterday, so I'm right up to here. And it's just as delightful and fun as the first one was. So excited to keep reading this this month. Then next up, a buddy read with my friend Ange from Ange with an E. Hi, Ange. Um, we're reading the third in the Gunny Rose series. It's called The Russian Cage. This is by Charlene Harris. Uh, it's a alternative U.S., um, I guess, history. Is it historical? Hard to define. So the U.S. is um, partially a Russian Orthodox, partially there's um, New Canada, there's Mexico is much more north. It's different. I'm, I've talked about the series before. So this is the third installment in the series. This is supposed to come out on February 23rd. I hope it sticks to that because I'm looking forward to reading it with Ange right away, but that one's coming up. And then I am participating in the Allie Smith seasonal quartet read-along hosted by the wonderful Sarah at Hardcover Hearts and this month we are reading spring. So I have yet to read a page of winter and I haven't read any of the text thread at all for um, then Voxer in the group. So I would need to read winter <laughs> quickly first, read the Voxer group to catch up and then get a crack on spring so I can start participating in a timely fashion. But this is coming up soon too. Okay, and for the Book Naturalists Book Club, which I am so excited to be a part of, this is hosted by Heidi from My Reading Life and Doris at Aldi Books. This month we are reading The Home Place, Memoirs of a Colored Man's Love Affairs with Nature by J. Drew Lanham. This is set, I believe, in North Carolina where he grew up. So very much looking forward to this. So excited about it, like really so excited. And I have been feeling a need to read some chunky books. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of short books, don't get me wrong, but I really wanted to sink into something. And I'd like to do some nonfiction. So since the last few couple of months of the year and January were kind of crazy. I didn't have my head on right. You know, I didn't get to this as soon as I would have liked to. So I am writing that wrong and jumping right in I'm going to read The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. I've heard nothing but excellent things about this book for 10 years. It's overdue that I have read this 
and everyone on booktube who has read this recently has talked about just again how wonderful it is so i'm very glad to have my own copy and if this goes down as well as i think it will go down i'd like to roll right into reading her newest book cast the origins of our discontent um this came out in september of last year so i'm hoping to get to this too but this is secondary compared to this one again they're both enormous books but that's okay i'm looking forward to both so that's my official <laughs> official <laughs> uh, reading for my february tbr and i mentioned <clears throat> that i have two readathons that are both concurrent this coming weekend february 12th to the 15th the first is doris's mid-month book bash and she did a bingo card, I think, in honor of um, Adam from, from Memento Mori, because he doesn't like them. Um, so here it is. I will put up um, an image, too, so you can see it. I don't know what I'm going to read or do for these yet exactly. I want to wait and fly by the seat of my pants and see where I'm at. But the nine prompts are red on the cover, hardcover hearts, which won't be a problem. I watch Sarah's videos right away anyways, happy mail, flowers, a free space. A love read. She didn't want to just write romance novel, which I totally get, but I'm probably going to read a Bridgerton. <laughs> um, a poem, either an individual poem or a book. Um, another readathon, which is perfect for the next readathon I'll be doing as well. And then chocolate, which any excuse to eat chocolate, I am done with. So thank you for including that one, Doris. Okay, and then the concurrent readathon is the Golden Girls Galentine's Weekend readathon, hosted by the wonderful Rachel Fryman. Okay, I printed out the prompts here, which I'm sure are up on the screen. I just stuck them in my book journal here. So it's a watch and read. So <laughs> there are four prompts. The first prompt is for season one, episode two, titled Guess Who's Coming to the Wedding. So this is to read a book set around a wedding. And I will be reading, let's see if I can keep this open. This is the third and final volume in the trilogy. This is Jane, <laughs> Jane Vows Vengeance by Michael Thomas Ford. So this trilogy is really a lot of fun. Jane Austen is alive and well, alive and undead. <laughs> I should say unalive. You know what I mean? She's a vampire. She and Lord Byron and Charlotte Bronte and a whole host of famous authors from around that time are all vampires. So Jane owns a bookstore. No one really knows that she is Jane Austen. Um, but this is set around Jane's marriage. So um, it's all set in New York. And she's supposed to go on a honeymoon tour of Europe. So secrets from her past about are about to resurface. And there's an Agatha Christie style murder mystery to a wedding interrupted by the ghosts of the princes in the tower, to a shocking revelation about Walter's mother. Walter is her fiancé. Um, he is just a regular dude. Um, nothing about this trip is less than pure mayhem. So this is going to be so much fun. I have really enjoyed reading this trilogy very slowly over the years, and I am psyched to get to it. Okay, Prompt number two is for, these are all season one episodes of Golden Girls, by the way. So it's episode seven, the competition. Um, this is the one where Sophia wants to go to Sicily to visit her friends and Dorothy thinks she's too old and shouldn't do it by herself. So they bowl. Um, so this is to read a book with a bet or a game. And I have never read this book before. This is a beat up copy I got at the thrift store last year, but I'm going to read The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. I don't know how I missed this in my growing up, in my youth, because lots of people who are my age read and loved this when they were younger. It just missed me. So I'm hoping to get to this one. Okay, prompt number three is A Little Romance. It's episode 13, where Rose dates a very short person. This is one of my dad's favorite Golden Girls episodes. My mom's too. We just love this one. Um, so let's to read a book with less than 200 pages. Now, this was... <laughs> The January pick for Book Naturalist. I didn't get to it. January just was not a great month for me. So this is A World of Wonders by Amy Nejukumatetil. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. So I'd like to get to this, but I really do want to get to it soon. So if I don't read it during the week, I'll read it this weekend. If I do read it during the week, my backup 
is to read A Start in Life by Anita Bruckner. This was recommended to me by my friend Subashini from Litzy several years ago, and I just have not gotten to it. I tried to read this last year for something, and it wasn't the right timing. So it's still sitting here, but I would like to get to this one if possible too. And then the final prompt is The Flu, which is episode 21, where they're all sick together. Um, so it's a contagious book that you see everywhere. And she did apologize for saying contagious because it's still a pandemic, I know. But, you know, you it's a popular book you've seen around. So this made the rounds everywhere in 2019 and 2020. <sighs> I made a point to order a UK copy because it me um, and didn't get to it like I thought I would. So I'm hopefully going to finally rereading The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. I read her, um, it used to be up here where I put it, one of her books about um, the gentleman's guide to essentially prostitutes. Um, and I did enjoy that very much. It got a little samey after a while, but that's okay. So I'm very much looking forward to reading The Five. It's overdue. So Let's see what else. Ah, I decided to give myself more things to do and another kind of goal for the year. I'm trying to keep it casual and not go hog wild, but that seems unlikely as time goes on because I get very excited about books. <laughs> but I am copying Doris's idea on, and trying to do a read around the world challenge. I don't think this is exactly what Doris is doing, but I think that it's more like seeing how she does sort of naturally reading, reading around the world. I don't know if she is tracking authors and the like, author's origin, like where they're from, or if it's books set in, but I <laughs> totally copied her. Printed out a world map, and then behind it, I'm going to keep track of the books I read for each country and color in, of course, each country as I go along. So I will say for the United States, I am doing the lower 48. I'm counting that as the United States. And then I'm doing Alaska separate and Hawaii separate just because they are such unique places. I know they're not different countries. Please don't come for me. But I want to make sure that I include these also. Plus, I have tons of books about Alaska. I really would like to read. This is a perfect excuse to get them in. So I've got four countries checked off so far this year. One, U.S., of course. I counted Miss Cop, just won't quit for that. Number two is England, again, of course. <laughs> um, I used The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. Three is France, so I counted 32 Yolks by Eric Repair. And number four, Scotland, um, and that's Blue Lightning, which I just finished a couple of days ago. So I'm going to keep this up throughout the year, see how I do. I should probably do a check-in every quarter when I do my quarterly check-ins. That would make sense. No to future Laura to please do that. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. It's a lot, I know. Sorry. Um, are you participating in any of these readathons with me? Have you read any of the books I'm reading? Should I prioritize anything on my TBR one over the other? Um, let me know. I'm going to get back to all of your comments very soon and... This Friday reads will be a little bit longer as well, just because I want to do more of a wrap up of what I have read so far this month. And it will be two weeks in. So yeah, it's a little overdue. All right. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and staying healthy, staying warm, especially if you were in the Northern Hemisphere. My gosh, uh, yesterday, I think the high was one degree Fahrenheit. So that's negative, whatever it is in Celsius. I don't remember. Um, I think today it, it's a high of six. So getting warmer, shorts weather. Sadly, it's shorts weather for some still, but <laughs> not for me. Um, so I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and cozy and warm, reading something wonderful. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.